friend of mine on Facebook contacted me and asked if I could make her a, um, a vase or a hollow form, I guess, with like the one I just posted this past Friday, I think. Anyways, I'll put the link to that one that I'm talking about um, in the video. So a friend of mine, Carl, sent me some redwood. The last piece was made with sequoia. Unfortunately, I don't have enough of that to do another bowl, but um, he sent me some redwood, which is very pretty. It's beautiful. It's a little on the punky side on some spots, so um, and you can tell by how that is. But anyways, it will work perfect for casting. This is what it looks like. I have two pieces. So for and this project, even though um, I'm going to put it in the pressure pot, I am going to do two pours maybe even three depending on how much this absorbs the resin I'm gonna use the slow set the three to one and it's because that's what I have the most of and since this is a big pour um, I'm gonna need as much as I can and I'm going to put it in the pressure pot anyway just because this is a big pour um, and this is gonna absorb it I figured even maybe in my mind that extra time that it takes to set it will absorb into this uh, punky wood really good so I guess that's just my thinking and the fact that that's what I have so um, it's the three to one she chose moss green and grass green she wants mostly moss green with a little bit of the grass green in it these colors are in the link to the description below as well they are under um, color powders for resin under resin supplies I think I have it listed and they and the labels just look like this so just so you know grass green and moss green is what colors I'm going to use and get that poured or get this mixed up I should say and then I'll bring you back whenever I'm adding color color yeah so that's that I did do a second pour on this. Um, I just didn't video it because I came out real quick um, a couple hours later and just checked it and it was really good and soaked up. So I did. You can almost have a see a witness line in the project, but not too much. So I was thankful for that. Um, I need to learn to <laughs> turn my drill down a little bit before I start mixing because I always stick that in there and go full bore and then <laughs> resin splatters out it's like it's like you figure I'd learn by now but oh well it happens I have to confess with this project, I got a little ahead of myself and accidentally drilled a hole in the wrong end. It's almost the same diameter, the top, as it is the bottom, but I just wanted that um, bark and how it was to be at the top of the vase, so it, it did matter for this project. So I took it over to my drill press, as you've seen, and um, just drilled a 55 millimeter hole and um, just a, a mortise, and, and that seemed to hold pretty good. It's held um, a couple of the projects pretty good. Even though it's not cut in a dovetail, it held it pretty good. So I'm using my bowl gouge instead of a negative rake scraper because I'm wanting to take a lot of material off pretty quickly. I know that there's going to be a lot of this resin that I'm going to have to take away um, in order to get to the desired shape that I want 
um, similar to the other holoform. And um, so I'm risking, you know, again, the, the chipping out of material, but I'm too impatient to um, go easy just to, you know, string it off versus chip it off. And, you know, sometimes you just get chips, even if you are going nice and slow and taking it easy. Um, I get chips more so with your regular carbide bit versus your negative rake. The bowl gouge doesn't chip out as bad. Um, if you use a regular carbide on this, it it's like, I don't know, it seems like a hammer hit it versus, you know, you get pretty good chip out with your bowl gouge if you're not going easy. But that carbide tip, at least for me, is rough, rough on it. I had left the bark on this redwood um, when I casted when I cast it. Sorry, so I'm hitting these um, spots of bark, and it's like fur. It's like furry, furry bark. Um, and because it was so close to the wood, the resin didn't you know soak into it all the way, just on the surface. And it was tough to cut. I mean, you have different textures going on there anyway with the or densities, I should say, with the resin and the wood, and then there was this <laughs> fur. It was, like, weird. Um, that was in between the, the bark and the wood, so it it was a little tough to cut, and I had to put, you'll see throughout um, me finishing it, I had to put thin CA on it to stiffen up the fibers of it um, in order to cut some areas smooth and definitely before I sanded I had to put thin CA, thin CA on it um, the star bond thin because it just was not it was it was weird it was a very strange hairy bark I'm using a regular carbide tip here it's not a negative rake um, and the reason why is because there was there wasn't a ton of resin in this particular bottom area. It was mostly wood. Um, it is still chipping it out, but I'm trying to um, take off more material to shape it. It took a while to get it um, down to the shape. Normally, I'll start um, with the bottom sort of, but depending on you know how the top piece is going to be shaped and formed, I try to like to get the top piece somewhat around the size of what I want, um, at least, you know, minus a few details. And then that way I can um, visualize the bottom and the top. So you kind of just make your top the size you want it, the bottom the size you want it, and then connect the dots in between, I guess, if that makes any sense. I've had several people ask, um, email and here, if there was one tool that I couldn't go without, that if I could only have one in my shop, which one would it be? And I would say hands down my Irish grind bowl gouge. It is the most versatile, in my opinion, um, with my experience, um, tool that I have. I, I will use it for everything until it just won't work for everything. And then I will try to make it work for everything. <laughs> it is... Um, awesome. I love the wings on it because I can hog out a ton of material, especially in green wood. I can take out a ton of material um, at once and the tip on it makes it possible for final, finer details. And I love being able to shear scrape with it too and, and get those beautiful um, small little curly angel hairs. I have to confess, and I didn't show this um, in the video because it would have taken up so much time and made this uh, video 45 minutes or longer and I didn't want to torture everybody with that. Um, when I cut this mortise, it was just fine. When I turned it around to um, hollow it out, it cracked. Um, and it cracked good enough to where it wasn't stable enough to hollow out. So I first recut the mortise deeper um, so it would be further into the hollow form and have more meat. It had enough as it was. Um, 
but it just, it continued to crack. That one weak spot just kept cracking and cracking. So I filled the mortise with resin overnight and let it sit. I remounted it and cut a new mortise um, with, you know, the resin being in there. And it cracked again. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm never going to be able to get this thing mounted on the lathe. So it didn't crack too bad the second time and, or the third time I should say. So what I did is I just kind of repositioned it differently in the chuck. So that way the pressure wasn't on that crack in a specific way. And I'm sorry I didn't show that problem solving, you know, portion of this. It just would have taken, you know, so much time. Um, there was just so many steps and, and so many things involved. I figured I'd just tell you. So that being said, that's the reason why I decided not to hollow it out as deep. I know you guys can't tell or see it, but, um, I didn't hollow it out as deep as I could have because of the fact that, that was, you know, the bottom was weaker and I just, I wanted to be able to get this thing finished. So I decided to leave. It's probably about a thick or one inch thick, the very, very bottom to help keep that meat, you know, in there and not make that crack, you know, more vulnerable to cracking more until I could get resin, uh, inside and on the outside. The tip on my hollower is not a negative rake. It is a regular, you know, tip, um, carbide tip. So I kept feeling, um, the closer I'd get to the resin, I kept feeling this weird drag. And a lot of that also was from the furry bark. <laughs> so I kept stopping because it, it would just start feeling different. And that carbide does, once it hits that resin, it just... It just chunks it out. So be careful if you're using a regular carbide tip and, and hollowing out with it with resin projects. Um, you'll tell when you start getting into it because you can feel it grab differently. At this time, I, was, um, I wasn't really planning on putting resin on the outside of the piece. I was just going to re-sand it again because after all that, um, all the issues of, of getting it remounted, the outside finish had been pulled all up. <laughs> so I just planned on re-sanding it and polishing it with OB Shine Juice and whatnot. But I decided because of that crack um, that resin would be good because then it'll help um, seal up the crack. It was a huge crack, but it was enough to where I just, you know, I wanted to seal it. So here I'm putting CA glue on those fuzzy bark pieces so I can continue sanding because it just, it just sticks up and there is no, um, I guess I, if I can imagine what it's like to turn a palm tree, <laughs> cause palm trees have real, it's just fibers, just like straw. So that's what that was. Um, so I decided that I was going to go ahead and, and re-sand the outside um, and then coat it all with resin. And apparently I didn't get enough of the wax that I had applied before on it off because my first coat of resin, and I'll show that in a short video and talk about it a little more, had separated like oil and water. So I had to re-sand it on the outside and then put another coat, which then ended up working out just fine. But um, I'm using the a two to one fast hardener for this. And, um, I'd left it overnight. I let it, I kept it going the slowest speed on my lathe 
and it just seemed to work out better using my my hand with the glove it just that brush kept falling apart and all the bristles were coming off in the inside and that's so frustrating because I was just picking out bristles so I abandoned the brush idea and just dipped my hand in there and applied it with my hand and that seemed to work much better I could feel the smoothness of it you can feel where the resin is and where the resin resin isn't I should say so I you know hey <laughs> that's why I just used my hand and uh, I did for the second coat as well I didn't use any special brushes and it looks like the lathe is going really fast because the video is sped up but it's only going about 50 to 60 you know rpms uh, while I'm applying this just so you know it has to be sped up otherwise this video would be two hours long so <laughs> it, I'm going really slow it's not that fast and I left it spinning um, for about I don't know 20 minutes or so until the resin got tacky enough to where it wasn't moving anymore because this fast set um, it doesn't cure within 15 20 minutes it says 10 minutes to get like tacky I guess um, but it takes about two three hours for it to be no longer sticky so I didn't video it because I came out here this morning really quick before starting school with the kids and wet sanded from 320 to 400 which I just lightly sanded it um, after the epoxy dried and I applied another coat I'm getting a weird separation um, down here and I think it may be because of wax or something that I had applied before so I'm hoping this time it smooths it out it was really ripply when I came out this morning so that's why I didn't just scuff it to add a coat. I had to actually sand it to flatten that ripply I was getting in here. And it wasn't from, it just separated like oil and water kind of look. So um, that's what I just did. Sorry I didn't record that process, but I wet sanded it uh, 320 and then 400. Just the outside, the inside is fine. Um, I just put another coat of resin in there. It's kind of hard to get that all smooth in there anyway. Um, so the resin will help make it smooth. So that's that. And hopefully I put I use the fast set again. So what I'll probably do is come back out um, in another couple hours and see if it's um, separated again or not. If it is, then I will probably wet sand it with my micro. I didn't have to wet sand it. I just was able to use the Novice, um, Novice plastic polish, the fine grit on it, and it just polished it right up and ended up perfect. So I was glad I didn't have to go through all that again. I have a special prayer request, if you don't mind, um, for Chris Walters. He's struggling some with some loss, and I'd like for you to lift him up. But thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless.